Hello everyone. Welcome back to another lesson. Okay. Are you excited or what now? Because like, I mm, feel like I put a lot of effort into that. So I'm going to need you to be excited. Today, we are working on lesson four of our book for the longest night. Our learning intentions this is what we're learning today, y'all. We are learning to make inferences so that way we can have a better understanding of the text because good readers are able to make inferences. And um, to be successful, we have to, of course, first define what is an inference. So we will talk about that. We have to identify text evidence and background knowledge that support our inference. And then, of course, make inferences about the text. So today it's all about inferences. But before we get there, let's look at our vocabulary. So we have the word recoiled. It says, peering more closely, I recoiled. A snake. What do you think the word recoiled means? You can see in our picture here. Like, ah! Yeah, recoiled means to flinch back in horror or disgust. Right? So snake. Ugh, I would definitely recoil if I saw a snake. I do not like snakes. Please do not bring me your snakes. I don't want to see your pet snake. I do not like snakes. Not a fan. Spiders, don't bother me. Snakes, mm-mm. So recoil means to flinch back in horror or disgust. And our foundational skills for today, we remember are still working on those words from Latin. We started that a few lessons ago. So remember that many of our English words do come from Latin and understanding the meaning of a Latin word can help you understand the meaning of an English word. So as we continue, your foundational skills today will be a fluency read to practice reading this um, passage that is called producing paper. And so you have several um, words from Latin. And so I will just read through those. They're at the bottom of the screen here. So we have the word animal, centuries, differ, manufacturing, popular, portable, process, producing, similar, vellum. So those are your words that have Latin origins. Those, some of those words you've heard of and you use all the time, you're like, what, really? Yeah. So remember, a lot of the words that we have in our English language actually come from, um, from Latin. And so th that can help you with some understanding of word meanings, just knowing where those words are coming from and those original meanings. We're going to go a little bit backwards today, and I'm going to talk about what an inference is first. So when we're thinking about our learning intentions and success criteria, one of the success criteria was being able to define an inference. So here we go. Readers can use details on the page on what they already know about characters or events to make inferences about the text. So an inference is basically your own idea based on what the text says and what you already know. So we have right here, inferences equal a te text clues plus what we already know. So an inference is your own idea based on text evidence and what you already know. Bam, inference. Success criteria number one, check. Can I define an inference? Right here, guys, this is it. All right, so we are going to go ahead and read the story. And as we're reading, I'm going to have several stop and think questions for us that are all based on making inferences. And so that's why we did that first, because part of the rest of our success criteria is to be able to make inferences and then base it on text evidence and our own background knowledge. So that's the things that we're going to be working on now. So we've defined an inference and now we're going to practice making those inferences. All right, so let's get started. Chapter four, the first night. The night sky was filled with a million lights as though the eyes of the ancestors were watching. I sat in the middle of my stone circle and waited. Tonight, I was sure I would have the vision that would show me my life's path. I was also confident my spirit helper would come. Despite the elder scolding, I was expecting an important totem animal, which would prove creator favored me. The worthless one lay outside the circle. It smelled as if it had run into a skunk and then rolled into a rotten fish. Don't bother me. I am waiting for my spirit helper. The old dog raised its head, peered at me with bleary eyes and belched loudly, adding to its foul smell surrounding it. I wrinkled my nose. Ugh. 
As the hours dragged by, I sat impatiently waiting, but there was still there was no vision and no helper. The night seemed particularly long and the ground incredibly hard. I wished I'd remembered to bring my water skin with me. Water might ease the emptiness growing in my belly. It was in the lean-to, but I could not leave the circle to get it. It was nearly dawn when I saw something in the grass near my circle. Peering more closely, I recoiled. Ugh. Remember, so that means that you're flinching. A snake! I recognized the brown markings on its back and heard the faint rustle from its tail. It was a venomous rattlesnake. This one was not to be trusted. As I watched, the snake lifted its triangular head and watched me with its lidless eyes. It flicked its tongue, testing the air, and then, with deliberate slowness, slithered toward the opening of my circle. Ugh. So, right here we have a stop and think question that has to do with making inferences, and that is our skill of the day, and our learning intention and success criteria are all about inferencing. So, my question for you to think about, why does Windrunner say that the snake is not to be trusted? Hmm. So when we have an inference question, it's not answered right there in the text. Okay, the author doesn't tell us why Windrunner says, says this, but we can make an inference. That means that we're going to use text evidence combined with what we already know to come up with an answer to this question. So why does the Windrunner say the snake is not to be trusted? So it says, I recognize the brown markings on its back and heard the faint rustle from its tail. A venomous rattlesnake. This one was not to be trusted. So I can see in the text that it says that it was a venomous rattlesnake. Mm. And I know that venom means poison or rattlesnakes are very dangerous. So I'm going to say my inference is that the snake is not to be trusted because it's poisonous. It could um, really hurt Windrunner, right? So right there, I took what the text said. So it's a venomous rattlesnake. And then it says it's not to be trusted with what do I already know. Well, venomous means poisonous. And I know that could be very dangerous. It could even kill someone. So my inference is that Windrunner um, thinks that the snake could be very dangerous and could maybe even um, hurt him on his quest for on his vision quest. OK, so the text didn't say all that. I came up with that on my own based on what the text said. That is an inference. If I ran, I would fail the test. But if I stayed, I would be bitten by the snake. I saw the old dog was between me and the rattlesnake. The snake drew closer to the sleeping dog. The mutt must have sensed something because it, yawned, because it yawned lazily, as though coming out of a deep slumber. Then the dog curled its tail around its bony body and went back to sleep. Why didn't the worthless one run? I stared in disbelief. Sure, the snake would bite the dog and then come for me. The rattler um, glided soundlessly up to the dog, and I waited for the killing strike. But then, something strange happened. The snake hit the dog's curled tail and stopped. It was as though the thick tail was too hard to climb over. Instead, the snake followed the curve of the furry obstacle until it was past the dog. So, again, another inference question for us, or stop and think. What details help you infer that the events didn't unfold the way Windrunner expected? So meaning, how do we know that what just happened isn't what Windrunner expected? So we need to find that some text evidence this time because our inference is that this didn't happen the way Windrunner thought it would. So let's find the text evidence that supports that. So when we look back right here in the um, last paragraph on this page, it says the rattler glide, glided soundlessly up to the dog and I waited for the killing strike. So I can see with text evidence that that's what Windrunner is expecting. He's waiting for that killing strike. He's waiting for the worthless one, the dog, to be bitten. But then something strange happened. Ooh, so that's telling me that that's not what Windrunner expected. I know if something strange happened, that's not generally what is expected. He said, um, the snake hit the dog's curled tail and stopped, okay? And so right there, when it says that something strange happened, I know Based on that information, when something strange happens, that's not something that normally happens. So Windrunner must not have expected the snake to just go around the dog. He was expecting the snake to bite the dog, worthless one. Okay, let's continue. The rattlesnake continued toward me. It hissed and the rattle shook as it moved in, in for the kill. Why had the snake bypassed the dog? In an instant, the answer came to me. The curve of the tail had forced the snake to change direction. Quickly, I took off my horsehair belt and laid it outside my stone circle. 
the snake approached the, and followed the line of the belt, searching for a way in. It went past the opening, now blocked, and continued on outside the rocks. Unable to get to me, the serpent silently disappeared back into the night. I exhaled loudly. <sighs> that had been close. This far up the mountain, I couldn't have made it back to the medicine man in time to cut out the venom. I would have surely died. Ooh. So that was really a close one. So again, our stop and think. What details help you infer, okay, because the text didn't say this, that worthless one possibly saved Windrunner's life. So that's the inference that wor worthless one, the dog, probably saved Windrunner's life. But how do we know that? What details are in the text that help us to figure that out? So again, let's think. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Right, thinking. Got it. My brain turned on. So it says, why had the snake bypassed the dog? In an instant, the answer came to me. The curve of the tail had forced the snake to change direction. So quickly, I took off my horsehair belt and laid it outside my stone circle. So right here, these details. So Windrunner is thinking, well, why did this work? Why didn't the snake, um, why did he go around the dog? Oh, well, he had to change directions. So I can make the inference that Windrunner has, that if Windrunner's figured out that if the snake had to change the direction to go around the dog, then he could also, he used that idea to make the snake go around the opening of his circle. So again, I'm making that inference. The author doesn't tell me that that's why he did it, but we're making that inference that Worthless One probably saved Windrunner's life because he gave him the idea that if he made the snake change directions, that he would be safe and not bitten by the snake. As the sun rose, I left my sacred circle and immediately made a smudge to thank the snake for not biting me. Then I smiled. My first night's vigil was over. Only two more to go. Wow, that was a rough first night. Almost getting bit by a snake. Mm. So thinking more about inferences, and remember that inferences that you're taking details from the text plus what you already know, so that's our knowledge, to make our inference. So we're putting the first two columns together, the detail from the text and the knowledge, what we already know. So if I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about how the Windrunner feels about worthless one. So first off, he calls the dog worthless one. That's in the text, okay, that he's calling him worthless one. And I know from previous in the story that he called the dog foolish. Okay, he was calling him a foolish animal. So he's calling him, he's named him Worthless One. He's called the dog Foolish. So I'm putting together that Windrunner really thinks that this dog is useless, right? He calls him Worthless. He's Foolish. So Windrunner is not a fan of this dog. Okay, he thinks he's basically useless. And then another one that I can think, he says the dog smells in this part of the story. He said he smelled and he talked all about how he smelled so horribly. And earlier, again, I remember in the story, so this is my knowledge, what I already know, my background knowledge from earlier in the story. He called it a flea-bitten creature. So he thinks he smells. The dog's a flea-bitten creature. And I already know, like, man, if they smell and they have fleas, like, ugh, that is not really a pleasant um, description of an animal. So Windrunner probably thinks this dog, he's not really impressive, right? He thinks he's just, like it says earlier, he's worthless. He smells, he stinks. So Windrunner does not really like this dog is what I'm getting from this story so far. Are you? Do you think Windrunner would want this dog to stick around all the time? Like, would you want this dog to be a pet for yourself? But I'm thinking, man, if this dog stinks and you know, he's always in the way, like, I don't know. I don't know how good this dog really is to have around. So let's continue because your reading response today is to finish the table. So you have to make the inference. I gave you the detail and then some background knowledge that we know from earlier in the story. So I need you to make an inference, come up with your own idea based on this. So it says, um, Windrunner, remember, tells the dog, don't bother me. I'm waiting for my spirit helper. And Windrunner expects an important spirit helper. So what do you think that tells you? What inference can you make about Windrunner and that dog? Okay. So I want you to think about that. What does it mean when he says, don't bother me. I'm waiting for my spirit helper. And that we know from previous in the text, he wanted, he thinks he's going to get a great like totem animal as his spirit helper. He thinks he's going to have, you know, something, you know, really remarkable and important spirit helper. So what does that tell you about Windrunner's expectations for about the dog or about his spirit helper? 
let's go ahead and think about how can you put this information together to come up with a new idea or an inference. So that is what you're going to work on. I am also going to include just these two pages should be all you need to complete this reading response. Be sure to do your best, get all of your work done, be kind to one another, and I will see you guys later. Bye.